Hey everyone, we are back again, backstage at the Brand Innovators Sports Marketing Summit and Upfronts here in Scottsdale, Arizona. I'm David Teicher, Chief Content Officer, and I'm sitting down with the one and only Casey Hervis, CMO of Rocket Mortgage. Thank you so much for being here, Casey. Hey, uh, listen, any chance you get to uh, get out of 10 degrees and a foot of snow on the ground and uh, enjoy, enjoy some sun and it's an amazing week here, right? Between waste management and, uh, you know, Super Bowl Sunday. Phoenix does it well, you know, they got all the palm trees and cactuses and beautiful mountains and lots of sunshine, right? It's hard to say no. It's the way to go. So so before we dive in, just tell us a little bit about yourself for a second. Yeah, and uh, and so I, Casey Herpes, the Chief Marketing Officer at Rocket Mortgage in downtown Detroit. Um, spent 25 years in automotive, uh, joined Quicken Loans, now Rocket Mortgage, uh, almost six years ago uh, as a Chief Marketing Officer. We're primarily an in-house agency. We have 300 uh, team members that work on 14 of our brands. We have 100 plus brands in our portfolio. Um, within that, there are 13, 14 FinTech brands, mortgage, homes, loans, solar, personal finance. So we're the in-house agency uh, for those 14 brands. And you know, it's uh, it's been a wild, amazing, uh, crazy run. And you know, very blessed to work for an amazing company and exciting uh, industry. That's, I mean, that sounds like a lot and we really appreciate you taking the time to be with us and, and chat with us and share with our community this week. Yeah. So, so thank you. So, so let's dive right in. Cultural relevance is one of these buzz, and, and, and maybe deservedly so, but a buzz term, especially this week. Uh, everybody's chasing that elusive cultural relevance. I, I have a two-part question for you to get things started. Can you define what that means to you? Yeah, yeah. And, okay. okay, part one is can you define it? Let's go, let's start with that. How do I define it? Um, cultural relevance, and it'll probably feed into maybe the second part of the question that I'm sure you might ask is, you know, the way you look at it, and you know, I'll, I'll give it to you from the perspective of, you know, the business that we're in, FinTech, we'll use mortgage as the example. You know, at the end of the day, uh, you know, buying, getting a mortgage and getting a home is generally, you know, the most expensive thing you'll do in your life outside of having a family. Uh, it's a commodity, right? So there is not a piece of sheet metal that you can feel. You don't taste it, you don't feel it. Um, it's a commodity, but obviously it's a very emotional uh, emotional purchase. So, you know, as, as we look at it, cultural relevance to me is like tapping into, tapping into a moment and aligning and the, having the ability to align your brand message or strategy to that moment. Um, I'm much more of a fan, quite honestly, is if I think about the work that we do with Rocket Mortgage, whether it's general market, in our multicultural audiences, and certainly as we're here part of today in sports marketing is I am much more leans into con being contextually relevant. So being in the spaces, uh, being in the spaces where, you know, eyeballs, attention, affinity comes from, and then how do you work with, you know, brands, uh, whatever the brands might be, or personalities. And to me, it's being contextually relevant and working with one another to borrow equity from each other to do storytelling, offer experiences or whatever it might be. So I think culturally relevant is like, to me, that's like, all right, what's happening today and how do we jump on it, right? Uh, whether it's a trend, what have you, culturally, culture trends come and go. To me, it's uh, I like looking at what is the long run? Uh, what is the long run? So a lot of it for me is like leaning much more into being contextually relevant with partners, uh, or spaces or platforms that we're engaged with. Well, I, I love that. And, and to your point, right, you preempted the second half of the question okay. a little bit is, which is, does cultural relevance, is, is it even important, right? Do you need it necessarily, you know, as, as much as everybody in this industry is chasing it, do you need it? Do you need it to sell toilet paper? Do you need it to sell yeah. paper towels? Do you need it to sell mortgages, right? And that's an interesting. I, I think it's, it, to answer your question, um, I think for some brands, it's probably got to be an absolute cornerstone uh, of their, their go-to-market planning, right? And, you know, I don't know if it's toilet paper, but as I think about tech, some tech platforms, some CPG products, uh, sometimes automotive as well. You know, in, in our space, you know, in our space, it's very easy, um, I think, as a CMO to, you know, it's like anything else, right? We get up in the morning and we're going through our feeds, whatever those feeds are, whether uh, endemic industry pubs, you're going on social media platforms, and then you walk in a room like, why did they do that? Like, why are, and it's like, wait a minute, are we just doing it because we said we did it? Are we going to do the Harlem Shake or whatever? Because, you know, I'm aging myself already, but, uh, <laughs> That's okay. you know what I'm saying? Are we just jumping out to say we did it? Like, if we're going to do it, does it align with our brand? Does it come across as authentic? You and I both know we could sit here right now on my phone and rip through IG or TikTok or whatever it might be. And I guarantee you, we would find some brands and where you look at something and it, what, you, what I tell myself is like, right, that was really cool, that was smart, but man, more often than not, I look at stuff and like, there's, that might be trying too hard. It's a little cringy, right? It's yeah. a little cringy and that's something I'm really conscious of is we think about you know, being culturally relevant or leaning into a trend. 
okay, are we doing it just so we can, you know, say in a boardroom or we tell our team members or we can tweet about it? Or is it like, is it truly authentic to our brand and what we want to be able to, you know, uh, showcase to a client or prospective clients, whatever it might be. I think it's, it's a very tempting um, siren to chase, but you got to make sure it's aligned with your brand. Absolutely. So, so that's going to feed into kind of my next question a little bit, which is, uh, you know, again, Super Bowl advertising mm -hmm. is a, is a, uh, obviously a big topic for us this week here. Yeah. Um, Rocket Mortgage has historically been very active as a Super Bowl advertiser. Yep. What role does that ad play within the in broader marketing and media strategy, right? As big of an investment it is, it's only one day. It is so one day. So how do you think about that ad or, or all of that buildup and all of that investment and the role that it plays within the overall strategy? I mean, great question. Um, you know, we're fortunate with Rocket Mortgage. I mean, we're a 24-7, 365 advertiser. And so um, as we approach Super Bowl, we've been in five uh, since 2016 when we launched Rocket Mortgage as the brand. Uh, we've been in five Super Bowls and we've been fortunate to have some creative success, if you will, right? Back-to-back uh, -back USA Today ad meters, that always feels good, you know, with a FinTech brand. Um, but the way we approach Super Bowl is um, being an always on advertiser. We're not a brand where, you know what? You know, we're pushing our chips in the table, if you will, and we're you know we're a one and done. There are brands that you and I could go. Yep, the old master lock. It was the right. old that was the old master lock marketing campaign. It was like they took their entire budget and they spent it on February twelfth, and it was like <laughs> That's see it. you next year. Guess what? We're on air the next day and what have you. So we approached Super Bowl like, all right, how can something be Super Bowl worthy? And I've got criteria that simple, epic, relevant, um, but it also has to be campaignable. We are not a one and done. So in the work that we did two years ago with like Tracy Morgan and uh, pretty sure versus certain last year with Anna Kendrick and Barbie and um, and uh, Dreamhouse like that is then campaignable for. So for the next three, six months in uh, our first Super Bowl campaign, I was a part of with Keegan Michael Key um, and Translator was the name of the campaign. We ran that for over a year. And so that's part of the thought process. It's yes. I mean, no, make no mistake, you know, buying a 60 production, talent, and you know, we'll call it the, the, the dressing that goes around Super Bowl, it's a $20 million 60 second bet. And, but we, we bet on then is, okay, well, how can then that idea, that organizing idea, how can it have a longer tail campaignable that doesn't still, like still ties into Super Bowl, but it's, it, you know, it, it runs on a longer uh, time period and platform. Uh, but yeah, you gotta give it legs, yes, right? Sir. Yep. Totally get it. So, so that's going to segue again nicely into the next topic, which is um, the hot, one of the hottest topics in this industry, one of the hottest debates in this industry right now around brand versus performance. Yeah. And uh, the pendulum's swinging all over the place, and uh, you're going to get some very heated responses depending on who you talk to. Right. Um, Super Bowl is traditionally thought of as the biggest brand play that you can make. How do you think about the the, the ROI and the performance and the making sure that you're driving the results that you want to drive. I have a funny story to tell you really quick, is my son's in uh, fifth grade, and uh, I went and presented to his class recently, and I presented how to do a Super Bowl. I thought it'd be really cool in front of these kids. That's awesome. And so afterwards, I shared with them our Super Bowl process, and I say, hey, do any of you have questions? And this young man, fifth grader, raised his hand, he goes, well, what kind of ROI you get on that expense? I was like, whoa, <laughs> first, I go like, who's your dad, and why is he asking? But um, uh, great question, I mean, got $20 million. And yes, it's brand. I mean, no matter what, every brand's gonna have their KPIs and we have them from an upper funnel standpoint, right? Awareness, positive opinion and consideration. Uh, but also as we think about that with the long tail, make no mistake. I mean, we have to drive business outcomes. Uh, we, aren't, we don't have 25, 3,000 rooftops, if you will, like an automotive, but I got 4,000 bankers that sit kitty corner from us. So how can we drive outcomes? Whether it's you know, lead generation, lead flow, we see positive upper funnel, like obviously we strive and have KPIs of upper funnel improvement, but ultimately too, you gotta be able to show business outcomes. It might not be the next day. It's not the old adage in NASCAR, like you know, win on Sunday, sell on Monday. Um, you know, yes, of course we see those spikes, but do we, you know, do we see with Super Bowl, our goal and intent is, you know, when you run that moment, and it's not necessarily the day of the game, it's generally the next day, the day after, and you know, if things are good, you know, like it's that water cooler talk, and if, if your commercial does well, or unfortunately, if it's lauded, you know, it could have a detrimental effect. You might get the site traffic, but for wrong reasons, 
And um, so what we hope is that, and our, our goal is like when you do a Super Bowl, like, all right, do we establish a new normal, if you will? Like mm -hmm. we see that peak and that spike, and then how can we hold that and almost establish a new norm? And obviously, as we think about our funnel measurements and down funnel from, you know, a site visit and how that goes all the way down into conversion. Um, but, you know, to your point, uh, performance and brand, depending on the industry you're in. I mean, make no mistake, we're in challenging times uh, with the you know, highest rate of inflation in 30 or 40 years. Uh, refinances, you know, obviously a challenge for versus the last couple of years. And so that's where we have a lot of that discussion. The, the majority of our spend is in performance marketing, make no mistake. Um, but the brand and the brand, the brand media and the brand creative, you know, our main KPIs is how do we drive, you know, positive opinion consideration, start to slide down a little more down the middle of the funnel that can help hook into uh, certainly our performance markings, which is, you know, middle down. Well, they have to play nicely together. At the Absolutely. End of the day, right. So I, I love that. And so it's all in house for us, which is nice. That helps. Um, certainly. Um, so, so last question, this is going to be another, you know, hot topic question, okay. departing from Super Bowl conversations for a second, uh, CMO tenure. Yeah. It, depending on what reports you're looking at, almost unanimously at its lowest level in about a decade, 18 to 24 months sometimes, you know, at, you know, depending on again, where you're looking and what stats you're looking at. But my question to you is what's going on and how can we set CMOs up for more success? Is it a matter of expectations? Is the role just evolving? Are we like witnessing an evolution? What's going on with the CMO role? How can we address this? Um, that's a great question. Uh, and it's funny. Uh, I started now six years ago next month. And so uh, based on your watch, uh, I'm, I'm in the triple overtime uh, when it comes to the average tenure. And we've seen that certainly in the last five years. Um, and this was my first CMO role. So I, I, you know, I, I can't bring it from the perspective of, you know, I've been at four companies as a, this is my first one, you know, as a CMO in six years. And I will tell you the role in my six years has drastically changed and evolved. Um, I still believe this business is the perfect blend of, you know, art, science, and courage. But obviously the role of data and the role that data plays, you know, I don't know how you want to, you know, uh, pie it out, but, you know, I still believe, you know, uh, art, science and, and art, science and courage, the role that data plays. And so obviously we've seen, you know, the, the CMO role very much, you know, much more data driven, leaning into performance. Um, you know what, and to answer your question of, you know, how could things be different? How can we set up um, CMOs for success? I mean, I can speak from my own experience in that I've been there six years and in many ways, I feel like I'm just getting started. And if I were to rewind the hands of time of my six years at Quicken Loans Now Rocket, and if I were to drop a pin at two years and say that was your tenure, I don't know, like, you know, I, I, I like to approach things with a long tail approach. Um, you know, and I, we had those conversations, I joined the organization, like I believe this should be a long, now, granted, it has to work both ways and there has to be performance and there has to be results that go. Um, but, you know, it just to me, it's disheartening sometimes, as, you know, companies, uh, companies that look at that role as a year and a half, two years, because, you know, if you think about the momentum, things, you know, a new a he, she or they, a new CMO comes in and you think about what that first three or six months is, it's one is getting the landscape and maybe it's unwind, you know, what, what went well, what didn't get well, you're, un, you're, you're, you're unwinding and then you're trying to wind back up. And as you're winding back up and standing up and things are starting to take fold and if there's another change, I just, I just you know, like I can't speak from it because I haven't had that experience. It's just how disruptive it can be Absolutely. for the team and the brand and, you know, obviously out in, you know, the, the marketing media landscape. Absolutely. Sometimes you come in, you have to learn the business, you come up with your strategy, you bring in the team, maybe you're doing an agency I'm still review. still learning and, and then, every day. Right. And then, you know, the next, you blink, you bat an eye and, and it's 18 months, right? Yeah. So it's, it's, it's tough. So, you know, hopefully, I mean, the role is definitely evolving, but um, it'll be interesting to see, I guess, you know, where, how, when the dust settles. Uh, there's, um, you know. Uh, a great piece of advice I got when I joined Rocket, uh, it was our, our vice chairman. Uh, he pulled me aside one day and he said, uh, Mr. Herbis, uh, you may, you know, get comfortable with feeling uncomfortable. Right. And it was an eye-opening moment and, uh, you know, in whether it's in FinTech, automotive, I mean, I think we are just very transformational times. Uh, we're seeing that here today. Anytime you, you speak and you go to conferences or you're learning, I mean, you just think about just, you know, five months ago, you and I wouldn't be sitting here talking about chat, chat GPT and now, you know, uh, it's every yeah. every conversation. My, yeah, you know, everyone's you know everyone's jumping into the culturally relevant you know AI pool, and we're all trying. We're gonna. I'm dying to see what's gonna you know on Sunday. 
you know, who's leaning into the, you know, the AI space and there will undoubtedly know, be a few, right? I'm, it's this I'm, year's I, super. It's this year's QR code for the Super Bowl, right? Exactly. I want. I don't know if all the sports betting apps will will, will have that, but I, w I would definitely bet there's at least three that lean into AI. I'd put money yeah. on it, right? It's a playground. Anyway, thank you so yeah, much for being here. So much, really yeah. appreciate, appreciate it. it. Uh, again, Casey Herbis, CMO of Rocket Mortgage. We appreciate you spending time with us. Thanks. All right. Oh, wait. I got one more. Can we? Keep rolling, keep rolling. All right. Last question. Yeah. Can take the football. Yep. Eagles or Chiefs? You want to score too? Oh wow, yeah. But we're gonna look back at this and and you know give everybody a grade. All right, I'm gonna go with experience. I'm gonna go with experience, and so I'm gonna go with the Kansas City Chiefs. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go 34-24. I don't know what the spread is, where the over under is, but uh, I think they'll cover the spread. And but I think it's gonna be you know it'll be a high flying game. I'm gonna go 34-24. All right, you heard it here. I love it. Thank you so much. Yep.